The Lord's portion is his people. How are they his? By his own sovereign choice, he chose them and set his love upon them. This he did altogether apart from any goodness in them at the time or any goodness which he foresaw in them. He had mercy on whom he would have mercy and ordained a chosen company unto eternal life. Thus, therefore, are they his by his unconstrained election. They are not only his by choice, but by purchase. He has bought and paid for them to the utmost farthing. Hence, about his title there can be no dispute, not with corruptible things as with silver and gold, but with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord's portion has been fully redeemed. There is no mortgage on his estate. No suits can be raised by opposing claimants. The price was paid in open court, and the church is the Lord's freehold forever. See the blood mark upon all the chosen, invisible to human eye, but known to Christ, for the Lord knoweth them that are his. He forgetteth none of those whom he has redeemed from among men. He counts the sheep for whom he laid down his life, and remembers well the church for which he gave himself. They are also his by conquest. What a battle he had in us before we could be won! How long he laid siege to our hearts, and how often he sent us terms of capitulation! But we barred our gates and fenced our walls against him. Do we not remember that glorious hour when he carried our hearts by storm, when he placed his cross against the wall and scaled our ramparts, planting on our strongholds the blood-red flag of his omnipotent mercy? Yes, we are indeed the conquered captives of his omnipotent love, thus chosen, purchased, and subdued. The rights of our divine possessor are inalienable. We rejoice that we never can be our own, and we desire day by day to do his will and to show forth his glory. Strengthen, O God, that which thou hast wrought for us. It is our wisdom as well as our necessity to beseech God continually to strengthen that which he has wrought in us. It is because of their neglect in this that many Christians may blame themselves for those trials and afflictions of spirit which arise from unbelief. It is true that Satan seeks to flood the fair garden of the heart and make it a scene of desolation, but it is also true that many Christians leave open the sluice gates themselves and let in the dreadful deluge through carelessness and want of prayer to their strong helper. We often forget that the author of our faith must be the preserver of it also. The lamp which was burning in the temple was never allowed to go out, but it had to be daily replenished with fresh oil. In like manner, our faith can only live by being sustained with the oil of grace, and we can only obtain this from God himself. Foolish virgins we shall prove if we do not secure the needed sustenance for our lamps. He who built the world upholds it, or it would fall in one tremendous crash. He who made us Christians must maintain us by his Spirit, or our ruin will be speedy and final. Let us then, evening by evening, go to our Lord for the grace and strength we need. We have a strong argument to plead, for it is by his own work of grace which we ask him to strengthen that which thou hast wrought for us. Think you he will fail to protect and sustain that? Only let your faith take hold of his strength and all the powers of darkness, led on by the master fiend of hell, cannot cast a cloud or shadow over your joy and peace. Why faint when you may be strong? Why suffer defeat when you may conquer? Oh, take your wavering faith and drooping graces to him who can revive and replenish them, and earnestly pray, strengthen, O God, that which thou hast wrought for us.